Today I'm gonna to make a delicious version of enchiladas. It's a zucchini, poblano, and red pepper enchilada suizas. Start off by seeding and deveining a poblano chili. Poblanos can range in spiciness from pretty mild to a little bit spicy. So if you're a little bit afraid of spice, you definitely wanna remove those seeds. If you like a little bit more spice, you can leave them in, but um, they're a little bit tough because poblano seeds can get kind of big. So you can get spice in other ways by like using a spicy salsa, for instance. Because this is going to use a prepared salsa. Cut your poblano into strips. If you find that you can't find a poblano, which is a mildly spicy um, pepper. You could replace it with a bell pepper. I certainly wouldn't do that because I don't like bell pepper and I really actually do love a poblano. Then a red onion, recipe calls for small. I literally just got through this entire lecture on, an, on another segment about how I only, I only ever use a whole onion, but in this case, <laughs> I'm gonna contradict myself immediately and only use the half of this onion because I don't wanna overwhelm this dish. I am very thinly slicing this onion and you'll need about one and a quarter cups total. That's what you normally get from a small onion. Heat a 10 inch oven proof skillet. Cast iron is our favorite. To saute your aromatics. Add some oil, let it heat up a little bit. You're also gonna need a zucchini for this and this gets cut into about one inch pieces. I'm just gonna do that while I'm waiting for my skillet to heat. Do it while you're sauteing. I'm gonna, here, this is to test. When that starts sizzling, I can add the rest. <laughs> I never do that, but it, it all of a sudden occurred to me that maybe that was a good way to see if my pan was hot. This cast iron actually does take kind of a long time to heat up, but once it heats up, it holds the heat really well and it distributes the heat really well. It's a great, not very expensive kind of pan to have. They usually cost, like the inexpensive kinds of cast iron cost like 10, 10 or $15 and they last forever. I adore mine and I've had one of them for like 20 years. The more you use them, the more nonstick they become. This is a brand new skillet, so it'll take a while, but they come pre-seasoned now, which is nice. You want to saute your onions and peppers until they become tender. You might get a little bit of browning. You may notice in a minute or two, as your peppers start to cook, you might start uh, coughing a little bit. Sometimes uh, poblano peppers, if they are spicy, will cause a little bit of aroma in the air that makes you cough. The last time I made this dish, that happened and I couldn't figure out what was going on and I realized it was the peppers. So be forewarned, it does happen about five minutes for this. Okay, so everything is starting to get soft. The onion is turning translucent. Now it's time to add the zucchini. And this has to cook until it starts to sort of turn brown around the edges. That'll probably take about 10 minutes. Might be less, depends on the heat of your stove. I'm gonna season a little bit. Season as you go along, but be careful. This is calling for um, salsa. We call for one and a half cups of salsa and don't forget that salsa is free flavored. It has spices, it has salt, it has everything in it. So you don't want to overdo it with the salt. And the veggies have uh, gotten a little bit of browning on them and they're softening, but not like completely cooked. Transfer them to a plate, set them aside. I'm just gonna turn this off for a sec. So things don't start burning while I'm not paying attention. So we'll build the enchiladas right in this pan. And now this is not the rolled kind of enchiladas. We're gonna do enchiladas that are layered kind of like a casserole. So it's a total of one and a half cups. Into this pan I'm adding one cup. And the tortillas are gonna get dipped in this salsa. So you just do both sides very lightly. That's just to make sure that there's salsa on every bit because even though it's getting layered in the sauce, there's gonna be some edges that are sticking out. You need six total corn tortillas, not the tiny ones, the normal size, six inches. 
And then you layer. I like to put in three tortillas. And if you leave little edges sticking out, those edges get crispy in the oven. So I like to do that. And then some of the veggies and then more tortillas. More veggies. I wouldn't say crush it down, but sort of press it down to compress everything a little bit. And then top with the remaining salsa, which is another half a cup. You could probably make this with red salsa too if you wanted to. It's not exactly a traditional anything, but it is a delicious something. This is mozzarella cheese. You can use any cheese that will um, melt nicely. You have more authentic cheeses, you can use that, but this is just fine. Delightful, it was five ounces, just cut into little pieces. You wanna have your oven preheated to 375. And then there's one more thing goes on top, a little bit of sour cream or, or Mexican crema, if you have that, use that. But this works nicely too. And then this goes into the oven and what you're looking for is heated through brown, bubbly and delicious. And I can guarantee you that it is because I've been eating this all week because I have some in my refrigerator. This will take about 20 to 25 minutes. See you soon. Oh, it smells so good. I probably should let this sit for a sec. I really don't want to. Mm, have a little bit. I'm just gonna spoon it up and I feel like as I'm spooning it up, it'll cool down enough to eat. Uh, it's like molten. <laughs> ah, yum. Scoop it out. <laughs> oh my God. Ugh. Did you see that? That was a cheese pull. You don't get that if you let it cool down. <laughs> Gotta take the good with the bad. All the flavors have really melded together. The cheese is melty and the tortillas have gotten soft, but they're crispy around the edges. It's really nice. You can garnish with reused sort of classic taco garnishes for this. So we have some radish and some shredded iceberg lettuce and some tomatoes, and there's red onion, but I don't like raw onions, so I'm leaving it off of mine. I'm gonna sprinkle garnishes with a little bit of salt, and then I'm gonna try it. Maybe it's cool enough. Maybe I'm gonna burn my mouth. Nobody knows until it happens. <laughs> it's a pretty good chance. I would say it's a 70-30, burn, don't burn. The more I talk, the cooler it gets. Mmm, <laughs> mmm. It's so delicious, super duper flavorful, great for dinner, excellent for leftovers. Actually, if you do happen to have leftovers, heat it up, fry an egg and put that on top and eat it. So, so good. You guys are going to adore this recipe just like I do. If you like recipes like this and you want more, make sure to click like and subscribe because we have plenty more where this came from.